video along with an example. Let's see what is ACL, its features, functions and advantages of ACLs and uh, different types of ACLs in detail. And our next video would be the lab session for the same. If you are new to our channel, please subscribe the channel to get the regular updates. ACL is an access control list. It's an important security feature available in our layer 3 network. So ACL is a set of uh, rules that either permit or deny the traffic that passes through the device. Okay, so uh, these rules are processed in the sequence order one by one from the top to bottom. If one rule is matched, then further rules are not processed. And by default, implicit deny is the last rule for any ACL. So uh, if there is any traffic that does not have the matching rule, then it will be denied. Okay, And uh, this is the uh, just a sample uh, ACL, I would say. And it's very high level. I, it's not the exact way how the ACL looks like. Okay, This is just a very high level uh, for a basic understanding. Here I have put rule 1, rule 2, rule 3, and uh, but actually it is in the sequence order as like with sequence number, okay. It's it's not the exact way, uh, it's for the high level understanding. This is how ACL would be looking like. Uh, it's a set of uh, rules, okay. Whenever a traffic comes to the router, the router will go to, to its ACL. In, when the traffic is passed to that interface, the router will check its ACL and it says uh, it, it will process each rule in the sequence order which means one by one it will process and it will check whether uh, the traffic will comes under uh, the request comes under this rule rule one okay uh, if not it will go to the other rule and if not it will go to the other rule like that rules will be processed one by one say for example if it is when it coming to rule two and if it matches uh, matches to this rule then this traffic will be permitted and allowed to pass through the router okay and if in case it is not permitted or if it is not matching for all the four rules then by default it will come to rule 5 and it get dropped because it's uh, by default uh, the last rule of any ACL is implicit deny okay which means deny any packet so this is how ACL works it's just in very high level understanding okay uh, during our lab session I'll show you how uh, exactly the ACL looks and uh, these are the two main types or the, the two types of ACL. One is standard ACL and the other one is extended ACL. So standard ACL is the very basic type. Uh, the reason why I'm saying basic type is uh, the filtering is based only with the source IP address. Okay. And uh, I, I can either block or uh, allow based on only the source IP address of the traffic. And it is common to all the service. It's not specific to particular service. Say, for example, um, here uh, in this scenario, we are having two routers, okay, and uh, there is a LAN segment for under each each uh, each router, okay. And standard ACL is something. Oh, what is standard ACL? Standard ACL it will work based on the source IP address, okay. So in this scenario, uh, let's see in such a way, we have a two users with uh, IP address 10, 10, 10, 1 and uh, the other user is having 10, 10, 10, 2, okay. And I have an FTP server in this network with the IP address 192.168.10.2. Uh, if I want to allow an access to uh, this particular user or uh, to this entire network, I can write in standard ACL here in this interface at this router saying that permit IP address 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 uh, say, for example, if I want to uh, allow access only to this user, I will write a standard ACL here at this interface saying that permit 10.10.10.2. 10, 10, 10, so, whenever a traffic comes from this user with the source IP address 10.10.10.2, 10, 10, 10, uh, this packet will be processed here by this ACL, and there there is a rule to allow this particular user, right? So, because standard ACL works based on the source IP address. So, as there is a rule to permit uh, this 10.10.10.2, 10, 10, 10, this traffic will be allowed to pass and user can access the FTP server. Just like the same, uh, if I have only a rule to allow this particular user and at that time if this user from 10.10.10 10, 10, 10 is trying to access the same FTP server, what happens? This traffic will come here and here this router will check for the ACL 
and in the acl it is mentioned permit 10 10 10 2 only okay not the one so this is not permitted so it is denied okay and also if i want to allow the entire network there is a way instead of uh, uh, writing in rule to permit only this particular user i can permit the entire subnet or the entire network so whatever user whoever user trying to connect from this subnet he will be allowed okay so this is what uh, standard acl and it's a very simple uh, acl method okay it's not too complex and uh, using this method we cannot uh, it's it's common to all the service say for example if i want to permit if i permit here for this network all the services i can access available in this network so if i having a tftp server and if i have an smtp or any other web server access is open to all the service okay uh, and i cannot specifically block one service and i can allow access to the other service no it's not working it will never work in the standard acl it's very uh, basic which works based on the source ip address and the only thing either you can allow or permit the ip address of or the uh, ip address of particular user or the ip address of the network okay and it is as i said it is common to all the service it it will never work based on the selector or specific service so if, if it is allowed it is allowed for all the services available in this network if it is denied then it is denied for all the network or all the services okay this is what standard acl is and extended ACL, extended acl works based on the source ip address destination ip address port number protocol and service and more on okay so the good example for that is um, okay say for example the same scenario i have uh, two users with 10 10 10 1 and 10 10 10 2 okay and i have a uh, ftp port here and you just consider this is some other uh, server okay uh, maybe uh, Yes, it, it may be some other web server okay uh, or, or some other service uh, it's running here smtp server whatever server it is and if i want to give an access to this user only to the ftp server for, for this network at this network so what i do i'll do i'll write an acl here at this interface of this router saying that a permit user this a permit uh, the traffic comes from the source 10 10 10 dot 2 okay that goes to the destination 192 168 10 dot 2 with a destination port number 21 for the service ftp okay so if i write a detailed uh, acl permit rule so if this user tries to connect uh, this ftp server so what happens this request will come here and this packet will be processed by the router along against with its uh, acl and in acl we have a permit rule uh, to allow this user to reach this destination uh, to the destination port 21 for the ftp service right so this request will be allowed and user can access the ftp service and at the same time uh, if the user this is the same user trying to access some other service which is running in this server the uh, request will be denied here because in the extended acl uh, rule uh, which we have mentioned here we allowed only uh, permit towards this ftp server and only with port 21 and for ftp service only okay not some other uh, devices or for some other services in this network okay this is how it works in the extended service extended acl in extended acl we can uh, give a detailed uh, rule as like uh, whenever a source whenever request coming from a particular uh, source to a particular destination to the destination uh, port number for particular service either permit or deny okay now also for an uh, other example you can consider uh, let it be a web server and uh, there is some web application hosted here in the server and it uses a http port number 80 okay and i want to give an access to both the user to, to the entire land to this entire network 10 10 10 10 0 slash 24 uh, to access the a web application okay so what i can do i can write an acl extended acl here saying that uh, permit the source ip uh, when i say permit the source ip here i'll mention the source ip as the entire subnet uh, entire network okay not particular user so i'll uh, permit 10 10 10 0 slash 24 okay which allows the entire subnet or entire network okay 
to the destination 150.150.150.1 to the destination port 80 for HTTP service. So whenever any user from this network trying to access this particular web server uh, for the HTTP traffic with port 80, traffic will be allowed. Okay, you just consider, uh, just for an uh, example, you just consider uh, it's a web server. Okay, one application is running in port 80 with the HTTP, and just consider there is an other application, web application that is running in the same server. Maybe uh, uh, it's working in HTTPS with port for, uh, 443. Okay, uh, so what happened in that scenario? So, whenever a user is trying to access that uh, same application, but using port 443 and service HTTPS, the packet will be denied here because the existing rule is only to allow this users or this network to access this web server using port 80 for HTTP service only. We have never mentioned or we have not write, written any rule to allow uh, access to HTTPS using port 443, okay, unless until we write explicitly to that particular, uh, uh, we write an explicitly uh, rule to access HTTPS application, it will be denied. Okay, this is what extended ACL is. Okay, so the main uh, difference is in standard ACL, we can write rule only based on the source IP address. If this is the source IP address, we can either permit the traffic or deny the traffic. Okay, and if you are permitting the traffic, it is common to all the service. You cannot define only for this service or only for a particular service like that. If you are permitting it, it is common to all the service, whatever service available in that network. Okay, but in the extended ACL, uh, we can write filtering. We can write the rules based on particular source. We can write rules based on a source address, destination address, port number, protocol, service, and so on. Okay, so uh, this is the main difference between standard and ACL and uh, one more thing is uh, whenever we are writing an ACL we can uh, write an ACL in two types as like uh, one method is going ahead with numbered ACL uh, and other method is going with named ACL okay so when I say numbered ACL instead of giving a name to your ACL uh, set of rules you can give a number and uh, if you are giving any number from 1 to 99 then router understands that it is in standard ACL and it will uh, work based on the standard ACL rules, which means it will check only the source IP address and it will either permit or deny based on the rule, whatever we have written there. And uh, in the numbered ACL, if we return uh, the number from 100 to 199, then the router understand that it is an extended ACL and it can work in the combination of source IP, destination IP, port number, protocol and service and so on. Okay. So these are the two methods and uh, hope it's useful please subscribe the channel subscribe the channel for more updates um, thank you for watching the video thank you for watching the video for more updates please subscribe the channel for any queries and feedback uh, you can uh, write to network professional 369 at gmail.com or for any queries you can ask in the comment box below thank you